What's up guys, my name is Barry Michael Doyle and in this video we're going to carry on part 3 of building a YouTube search application with React Native. Now in our last two videos we set up the header and we set up the search bar. If you've missed those I'll leave a link to the previous video where we set up the search bar in the description below. Now let's head over to our code and see what we've got so far. Right now we've got our full application all in this app.js file. Everything is in here. Our, our entire application that creates this is all in here. So what we have to be more specific is we have our app root view here, which flexes over the whole screen and it's got its little background color of that grayish color that we see there. See, that's not pure white. It's a, well, DDD color. And uh, we have our header component and we also have this bunch of JSX, which represents the search, the search bar. Now, you may realize here's our styles for the search bar as well. This is starting to get quite clunky. As you can see, we still want to add a video list. And if we add that and still have all of this lingering around here, it's going to start to look like a bit of a mission to decipher what's going on. So what I recommend we do is we create some, we split these up into some components. So what you want to do is go to your app directory here and add a folder called components. And in here, we will create two new files. We want to make one component for our header and one component for our, our search bar. So let's do that now. We're going to call this header.js. And that's empty there. And we want to add another one called searchbar.js. There we go. Now, I think the first thing I want to move over is our search bar because that's more of the style that we'll be doing. It will be creating this whole class app extends, but we'll be doing the search bar, etc. So the way we're going to do that is we're just going to start creating our normal React components like this. So we do React, and remember we want to use the component. We want to get the component from React. And that is all sorted. If we can remember now what else we had in here, we used the view and the text input and the button actually from React Native and React Native Elements to create our search bar. So let's import those as well. We'll import view and import text input. And from that comes from React Native. Then the button that we want to import comes from React Native Elements. Can't spell elements terrible and what we want to do now is create our search bar now this is going to be a class just like in our app we have this class app here and extends component so we're going to have class search bar extends component now usually you'd export default but i like to export things at the end in case we're going to have any other things that we'd like to export with this package we won't but for simplicity's sake i'll make sure that in general i will export these later so what you can do is you can add this export default search bar and this works exactly the same as back here in our app export default class app it's just split up into two steps because it just makes a bit more sense in case as i said you might want to export other parts of the search bar as well just like this component was exported individually and not by default react was exported by default that's how this packaging system works now if you remember from our app component we have a render method because all of our classic components with lifecycle methods have these render methods in it. So that's one of the lifecycle methods that exists with React. And if you remember what we had here, basically we can copy things. So I want to grab this, all the styles because these were all from our, I just cut that, I didn't delete it. These are all for our search, search bar. Because remember, we're moving this search bar over here out to this component over here. So here we have our styles. And uh, we can also take out this. I'm also cutting this, not deleting it. So that I can, whoops, mess things up a bit there. I can paste this in over here. So there we go. These all represent this. The reason ESLint is freaking out is because I have not actually used these yet. And this is just because it's expecting a 
well, I have to put my return statement in here. So remember when we render, we always want to return some sort of JSX. And the JSX that we want to return today is this view styles container style. All of this stuff, basically. We want to remove that. I'm going to get rid of this extra space here. And I haven't removed it. I've just cut it. So don't actually delete it because that would suck. Just undo your actions if you did. And we toss it in here. So basically what we've done now is we've moved our entire search bar component out of here. Uh, the one thing I forgot was to include my state term. This also refers to the search bar. So we're going to have to move this out. And we want to put this at the top here because this is a classic component with state. So this, this state refers to that state down there that we've been using in our search. And what we've done here is we have completely removed everything, all the stuff to do with our search bar from this app. So as you can see, we're not using button anymore or text input, so we can remove those. But what we would do want to do is, here's our full search bar component, and it's exported. What we want to do, I've just copied that, is add this to our application. And we're going to do that as follows. We will import search bar from dot slash components. So that takes this current directory. That's what dot slash does. If you do dot dot, it goes in that directory up. But we want in this root directory, we want to go to components. Yes. Slash search bar. And this gets our search bar component. Now, what we want to do here is we want to add our search bar to our current application. So do that by just simply adding the search bar component that we've made. And it's all done. It's added. I'm not going to go through the whole process of, oh, it actually is just loading everything. So there we've implemented our search bar. So there we go. Our, our emulator has got this going. And this all works as it did previously. If we go to our expo document, if I say search, uh, there's no term in there. So obviously it will return nothing. But term adds there, terms, the search bar functionality still works as planned. Now, I want to show you something that we could do with this. Uh, we could specifically go into our search bar and let's see, in our search bar, we can add this instead of saying the console log. Well, yeah, currently we're doing the console log. Instead of saying the console log, how about we go into our application and we add a little something special here. And in our search bar, we can add a property called on press search. So on this press search, we want to run, hmm, let's make a function for our component called on press search as well. On press search, and it's going to take a term. So this is a little bit complicated, but you understand it over time. And when you see what I've done when I'm finished, you'll you'll understand what's going on. So what you want to do is say console.log term. So I'm going to keep the functionality that we've always been having. And over here we want to say this dot on press search. So on press search is a property that we still have to implement into our search bar. But basically when it happens, it's going to call this on press search. And this on press search function is going to come with a term property in it as well, or attribute, or parameter, that's the right word for this. And this, it will console log it. So it will do what it's already doing. Now, what we need to do now is in our search bar, we need to implement this. So we implement this as follows. For our button, instead of saying on press console log this dot state dot term, we want to say this dot props dot on press search. And then we want to input the parameter of this dot state dot term. Now the way this is going to work is when this button is pressed, it's going to pass, it's going to call a function to this dot props dot press search. So this dot props dot press search, this function the property of this entire component on press search 
is going to run with the parameter of this dot state dot term. So that basically means this is going to run this function, which we have set up over here. And if you see in our application, it should work. So I've actually already loaded this up. And uh, if we go check into our application, I really hope this works so we can see that it works. Yay, it works. I can type in yay because it still works, which is awesome. And just to prove that this has actually reloaded, my previous terms are up there that I've posted. So this actually has worked and reloaded. Now, the other thing I want to do is, as you can see, this is much cleaner than having the entire massive file that we had earlier. And the reason I put this, you can keep this just up here. I think for now, oops, just deleted all my progress. For now, I will just keep this up here, but later on, we might add some more properties to this. And that's why I put them on a multi-line like we did here, because otherwise it just goes off the page. Now, this header component as well is also kind of starting to bug me just because it's it can be smaller. It can We can also put it to its own little container. But the thing with the header component is it doesn't really manage any state things or have any lifecycle methods that we have to worry about. So we're going to put it in here, but the way we're going to implement this is a little bit differently. We're still going to need to import React from React. Notice we don't need to import component, and I'll show you why exactly in a second. Not in a second exactly, what am I saying? We want to import header from React native elements because we are moving this over now. So we can actually get rid of this header here because we're importing it where we need it over here. Which again, just further cleaning up our application, main application file. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create a stateless functional component. Now you do that by doing this and we're going to call this app header. I think that would be a suitable name. And this accepts props which we'll talk about in a second. And what we can do is literally, we can just copy this out or cut it out and put it in here. Now, what I meant to do is make these curly, or well, let me show you the full, the full on way of doing this. So what we're actually supposed to do is we're supposed to go and return this header over here. Let me make a line there. And let me just clean it up a bit. Now, this also requires a semicolon. We're going to see that this over here, well, before I go in, let me just export default app header, just like we did in the previous search bar case, we exported the default search bar. This is just saying this because we're not using props yet, but this over here, ESLint mentions we can we have an unexpected block statement surrounding arrow body. So when you're just returning and you don't have anything else, you can actually simplify things. And thanks to ESLint, we have this fix fix this arrow body style problem. And it just changes these into brackets and then puts in what we're returning exactly. So it saves you the trouble of having to go through the full return statement. Now, at the moment, we're not using props. So you don't even have to put that in there. You could just say that and it will work fine. And we need to implement our header now. So first we've got to import it. So let's import header. Oh, we called it app header. I should actually call it app header here then as well. So let me rename that to app header. App header from, also from components, app header. And we want to use it like this, app header. Now, it would be nice to have some actual control over what's going on. So currently this is loading. It should take a second. There we go. We have our simple YouTube search. Now, what if I want to change the header text without going into this app header component that I've already made? This is just for demonstration purposes, but I want to show you how we can use these props. So let's say we want to change this simple YouTube search. I'm going to cut this out because we'll use it later to props.header text. Now, this is going to not work, so I'm not going to go open my application now. We can add a property called header text. And we can make it equal, well, equal a simple YouTube search. 
and this will work. Uh, I don't. Basically, it's working already. Now, what we can also do is just like I always moan about things. Let's make this simpler. We can remove props and we can take header text from props. So we take header text and this, as usual, I like to say, the header text is exactly the same as saying props dot header text. It's just obviously to me, it looks much cleaner. You can just take that exactly what you need and don't take anything extra. So there we go. We have our working application. Now, let me just start by saying that currently we haven't really changed anything. Our whole application is the same. There's no extra features in here, but we separated things and our whole app file is a lot cleaner because now when we want to talk about using the search bar, we can make our changes in the search bar component, which just makes things a lot easier. You can change stuff in the search bar without worrying about breaking the rest of the application. Same goes for the header. And because the header is so simple and doesn't have any states to worry about or lifecycle components or lifecycle methods, that's what we call them. You can just make them a stateless functional component like this. I might make a video to explain the exact differences between classic components with states and lifecycle methods and the stateless functional components, but we'll do that after this series is complete. Anyway, guys, thanks a lot for watching this video. And in the next video, we are going to be taking a break from the coding and we're going to focus on figuring out how we can get our YouTube search API set up so that we can actually get some search results going. Anyway, guys, if you liked the video, please leave a like and subscribe and tell your friends. Also, feel welcome to leave some comments because those always help me out to know what I'm doing right to what I'm doing wrong. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Ciao.